How heavy does the reaction of the real people weigh on you when you're making these movies that are based on a, real events? A lot, yeah. a lot. I mean, you have to start by asking them, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. their permission. Of course, it's it, the people who are caught up in these events always feel, in my experience, quite a bit different to what you would think. And it's an interesting phenomenon of terror and political violence in democracies because when these events happen, they affect us all because they're public events and they're meant to. They're meant to terrorize us and weaken our faith in each other and our faith in our institutions. But of course, for the people directly involved, it's an intensely private moment of grief and pain, unimaginably so. But So there's a tension between the public and the private. Then later you find, and I've seen this before, and it was certainly true of, of 22 July, that the roles reverse, but the tension remains in the sense that for those of us not involved, uh, we have to get on with our lives and our, you know, political and religious leaders tell us that we need to and we tell our children that we need to carry on as normal and that's important so we don't surrender to these things. But of course, for those directly involved, there's no getting on with it. Their lives are changed forever and so there's that tension. So when you go and see them, they want to talk about it, they want to warn talk about what's going on and, mm. you know, with the rise of the far right because they've seen it and, mm. uh, you know, but you have to ask their permission and, you know, you, I always say if they give permission, you're not responsible for the film. The film has to speak for itself and when we finished it, we come and show it to you first and, you know, you'll mm. judge it as you rightly should. <laughs> So with 22 July and Roma, they're both being released by Netflix, mm. which is obviously more known for its streaming releases. What kind of conversations did you have about having your movie seen on the big screen? Do you want me to take well, it? Or you want to take I, it? I, I, I don't mind. It, uh, in my case, it was pretty straightforward. Um, I sort of finished the screenplay and we sort of went out with it on a Monday and I think I spoke to Scott Stuber on the Wednesday and it was a choice really for us. We, you know, we could have done it at a very small level with the studio or sort of private finance and then distribution. Uh, and Scott Stuber, kind of who I knew from Universal, got on the phone. He, what he basically said was, we're going to try and create a proper theatrical side to the Netflix offering you know, alongside the streaming side. We think that's the way the business is going to go. It's not going to be, you know, you make a movie, the studio releases it, then there's a window, then you have a DVD, then you have, you know, and so on. It's going to be this way and they'll, it'll be different versions. That was essentially his pitch. Uh, then he said, I can't tell you how it's going to go. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but do you want to come? Alfonso is, is there. Marty was making his movie. Yeah. Let's see if we can invent this thing and uh, from my point of view this particular film I wanted it watched by young people mm -hmm. and the challenge that that we faced was young people sadly don't go to see art house movies they just don't you know um, but of course they watch them on Netflix yeah. Yeah. and so they ended up doing a couple of hundred screens for us I'm sure they'll be doing something yeah. similar you know which is exactly what you would have expected a movie like this to get in the US and Europe but then we do the stream and I remember talking to my son who's like a college age young man and he said well if you do it art house my friends will never see it <laughs> if you put it on Netflix right. we'll all see it mm -hmm. Hi, I'm Paul Greengrass. Gabriela Rodriguez. Cece Dempsey. I'm Nina Jacobson. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. Thank you for watching The Hollywood Reporter. The Hollywood Reporter's Roundtable. On YouTube. On YouTube.